I go all the way back then, so I don't know how many election campaigns there have been then since the, you know, for the federal parliament. But um, uh, it's been pretty boring, I think, Peter. Um, what particular issues did you did you want to know about? No, it's just more because you only, read readers they only read, read news readers only read the news. They never actually get an opinion, but you hear so much from them. Well, there's one thing I. There's one thing I don't like that Bill Shorten is bringing in, and that is uh, uh, changes to negative gearing. I, I think that's not a good move. And uh, I also don't like the uh, fe federal government's uh, changes to superannuation, which have caused big problems. And I'd like to see a bit more done about uh, global warming. Uh, so uh, I haven't decided who I'm going to vote for yet, but they're, they're sort of the issues that, uh, that I think are, are pretty much the bigger ones uh, after, uh, during this election. Yeah. What, do, what do you think, Peter? Uh, like you said, it's pretty boring. I think gone are the days of like Howard Costello, Hawke and Keating. I don't think we're ever going to see that again because they only, they only do, do what they want for the day. Well, uh, you mentioned all those names. I think the other thing that's really important is strong leadership. And we haven't had that since John Howard left. Uh, all the leaders we've had since have either haven't had the authority because they don't personally have it or haven't had the numbers in the parliament to really have that authority to make decisions that they need to make and including Malcolm Turnbull who uh, hasn't appeared to have that authority since he took over from Tony Abbott. So I'm hoping that whoever wins they win with enough uh, seats to to really have that stamp of authority on their leadership. Yeah. Good on you Peter, thanks for that. Um, it's fair, fair to say, though, Tony, I think, you know, going back to when I was a lot younger and had hair and was rather thin... That's a long time ago. I, I recall... Actually, I saw a photograph of you proposing to your wife on Twitter. Ah, oh, yes. You had, a, you had a, quite a head of hair back then. I, I did. That was some time ago now, 20-odd years ago. But when I was at school, John Howard was leader of the opposition for, I think, like his third time. He, he, was, a bit, he was a little wishy-washy... Well, I, I say little because that was the image that they had of him, little Johnny Howard. Well, they used to call him fact, little Johnny was... Howard. The funny thing is, he's a lot taller than well, not he a lot, but he's a bit than taller Hawk. than Bob Hawke. <laughs> yes. But John Howard was the treasurer in the Malcolm Fraser government, mm. uh, and he'd only um, he entered Parliament in 1974, and within two or three years, he he, he became uh, treasurer in the Malcolm Fraser government and there was big tall Malcolm Fraser and John Howard, John Howard. was considerably smaller yeah. so I guess that's why uh, maybe he got the uh, you know the the nickname but, little Johnny Howard quite possibly but I, I just think in terms of you, you say there hasn't been good strong leadership I 100% agree with you and I, I'm a bit of a fan of John Howard and I think he did a very good job but in the lead up to him becoming Prime Minister he and uh, Andrew Peacock, you know, danced around each other, you know, chopping and changing who was in charge of the party, and it was a, a bit messy. And I, I think John Howard pretty much got in by luck, didn't he? Really? Well, he got in the, by luck, but but you know, pork eating banana republic yeah, and all that stuff. Uh, well, that was a long time earlier, uh, Simon. You've got to give it to people like John Howard. He just kept at it mm. and at it and added. And I think that's the difference between the old crop of politicians and the ones we have now. I mean, people like Kevin Rudd, like Julia Gillard, they weren't in the parliament for a long time before they went into uh, quite senior leadership positions. I mean, John Howard, John Howard entered parliament in 1974 and became prime minister in 1996. So he was there 22, 22 years. years. Yeah. And he lost the leadership, won it again. So he'd been through trials and tribulations. Paul Keating the same. He was in Parliament in 1969 is when he entered Parliament and he became Prime Minister in 1991. So that's a mm. big learning period. That's a long time. Whereas Kevin Rudd, Julia Gillard, they didn't really have that, that learning period. 96900 693 if you want to throw in uh, a comment on this or uh, the other topic we were going to run with. The bloopers, the great bloopers you remember over the years. Um, 96900 693. Uh, who would you say so I'm, I'm not overly politically minded, but I, I look at the, the crop of politicians who are around now and I miss some of the older names. I miss Kim Beasley in terms of Labor. I liked Kim Beasley. There was something about him that I just thought was good. He seemed a respectable, nice guy. 
Uh, he probably didn't have that killer instinct he that, didn't. that you uh, need. That, that's I what think I, you need. That's what I quite like. But see, I, I also I loved Paul Keating, and he was just he was a nasty piece of work. I thought he was fabulous. I liked Kim Beasley for a whole bunch of other reasons because he wasn't like Paul Keating. Maybe we but, shouldn't talk politics because we've got Teresa on the telephone line, and uh, politicians <laughs> are not interesting, Teresa. <laughs> No, no, no. I was, I was going to say, that voice of yours, Tony, it's to die for. Oh, it is, isn't it? <laughs> I'm a gushing fan of Tony Tardio. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, and Simon, yeah, I was going to say, talk about being thrown in at the deep end. You're doing well. Um, well. I just wanted to make a comment. I sort of agree with you about the politicians. I think they're getting so bland. I think the media, um, they're terrified of saying the wrong thing. But like John Howard, Paul Keating, um, they were sort of, uh, I don't know, they could stand up, they could come to the town hall and and they could debate anyone, uh, you know, unprepared as, you know what I mean? They, they didn't have Dorothy Dick's questions. Anyone could stand up. And uh, even John Howard, when he came on with Sir Neil or somebody, people could ring in and they would, they would answer and they would have answers and, and they weren't sort of everybody coaching them. And, and, I mean, Paul Keating was so funny in Parliament with the things he'd... You know, he was entertaining. And I just think... We've lost that old-style politician and they're all so bland and, and yeah. scripted. They had a, they had a presence, uh, Teresa. I, I think you know, people have attacked Julia Gillard because, you know, she, and 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 she herself has said that she didn't get a a, a fair deal because she was a, a woman. And maybe she's right about that, Teresa. But I, I don't think she had a personal strength. You know, people like Paul Keating, when they got into a room or uh, were appeared on television, you were you were drawn to listen to what they had to say because they had a lot of personal strength. I agree, I agree. And even uh, whatever side of politics you are, someone like Julie Bishop, she will stand up, and that, she is a woman, and she doesn't back away if someone just asks a question, you know what I mean? She's been caught sort of with the media on the way into somewhere, and she always has a quick joke or some sort of ad lib, you know what I mean, which is obviously unscripted, and I think the public on whatever side sort of at least admire her for that. I was watching a clip of Julia Gillard uh, only just uh, about 15 minutes ago when she was being interviewed and she had been asked uh, if she was aware that two weeks prior to her becoming the Prime Minister, uh, somebody in her office was writing her speech that was to be delivered on the day that she became Prime Minister. And the question was asked, were you aware that that speech was being written? And she had three attempts at trying not to answer the question and the journalist kept digging his heels in. And she came across in that as rather weak. And I say that in contrast to somebody like, do you remember Margaret Thatcher being interviewed by, who was, was it, George, George Negus? George Negus. You know, you know this better than me. Yes, yeah, George Negus went to London for a 60 Minutes program, interviewed Margaret Thatcher at the height of her powers, and she, she was a tough lady. Mm. And he said something like, uh, people in the street that we're talking to uh, say this and this about you. And she said, which people? Yes. What street? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he had to respond to that. Uh, oh, our callers have gone. Is that right? Did we have some callers there? Uh, no, they've just been scrolled off the screen. Uh, we, we do need to get a break in. That's, that's why. But uh, it, it showed her strength. She dominated that interview. And you know, George Negus is no you know, little, little uh, work experience journo. He was a, a very good journo, but she had him cornered there. Yeah, absolutely. Look, and the other thing I remember is um, Julia Gill was uh, being interviewed on television and then she was to appear on the Alan Jones program on 2GB. Now they'd made a deal that she was going to be there at 10 past 7 or quarter past 7 one particular morning and she turned up late because she was being interviewed on television and he went to really went for her and it was her reaction that I thought was uh, was interesting. Mm. Um, she allowed him to dominate her and she's the Prime Minister. He's just a talkback host on radio. Mm. Uh, and I want a bit more from Prime Ministers than being dominated by talkback hosts. Now, Tony, it's been wonderful. Thank you very much for coming in and helping out. But we do, and thank you to the callers. We've still got some on hold. Unfortunately, we're not going to get you because. Do I get paid for this? Ross Greenwood <laughs> is back. Oh, yes, yeah, just invoice uh, Beersy. He'll look after it for you. Uh, send the invoice to Ross. We've been covering him. Uh, Ross Greenwood is back with us. So we re now return you to the money program. Money is not.